Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are starting with the concept of the linked list. Let us first try to understand what the linked list is. So, linked list is a data structure which consists of the nodes. So, linked list is a data structure which consists of nodes. These are the nodes, and every node should have at least two fields. Okay, so it has two fields. It has two fields. It has two fields. It also has a two field. So every node in the linked list has at least two fields. It means the nodes can have more than two fields also. So one of the field is known as the information part, and the other one is the link part, which actually consists, uh, which actually keeps the address of the next node. Okay. So this is the pointer field, which will keep the address of the next node. So every node in the linked list contains information and the address of the next field. So this is the if this is the linked list, this will keep the address of uh, this node. This will keep the address of this node. This will keep the address of this node. Okay. Now let's say the address of the first node is hundred. Address of the next node is two hundred. Address of this node is let's say fifty, and address of this node is let's say seventy. So this node will contain the address of the next node. Address of this node is two hundred. So two hundred will be kept here in this field. This node will keep the address of next node, so this will keep the address fifty because the address of this node is fifty. So this node will keep the address of next node, so this will contain seventy because the address of this node is seventy. Since there is no node after this, so this will contain a null. Okay, so slash is actually the indication that this is a null. Now uh, we should have an external link or external pointer that will keep the address of the first node. So let's say uh, start is a variable that is keeping the address of the first node. Okay, so the so the start contains hundred because the address of this node is hundred. So we should have one pointer or one variable that should keep the address of the first node. Now let's say these are the information of uh, these nodes A, B, C, D. Okay. So this is the linked list in which every node is containing two fields or more than two fields, and uh, one of the field is the information, and the other part is the address of the next node. So linked list is uh, a data structure that consists of nodes. Each node. Has at least two fields, one of which contains the information, and the other one contains. The address of next node. So this is the formal definition of the linked list. Okay. Now, if I say that this is the node, I am having a node, and it has an address p. So the information part of this node will be denoted as p dot info, and the next field of this node will be denoted as p dot next. so while writing the algorithms we will follow this convention only okay so this is the uh, p this is the ad, uh, node which has the address p and the information part of this will be denoted as p dot info and the next part of this will be denoted as p dot next so now let us write some of the functions related to the linked list we are first going to write the insertion functions okay so uh, the basic advantage of the linked list over the array is that uh, it it can insert at any place and the insertion and the deletion operations will be less costly as compared to array mostly the array fix uh, uh, in the array the amount of space is fixed or reserved at the compile time but in the linked list uh, we can allocate the memory as and when required 
so the wastage of uh, memory will not be there in the linked list but whereas there is a wastage of where uh, wastage of memory in the array for example let's say we are uh, writing a program that requires 1000 nodes uh, 1000 data items and 1000 data item if we require 1000 data items so we have declared an array of 1000 size but at the runtime we notice that only 100 information or 100 data item came so we have a wastage of 900 data items or 900 uh, data items memory so there is a wastage of a space huge wastage of this space 90 percent 90 percent space has got wasted only 10 percent was utilized or it may also it, it may also happen like we are we have declared the thousand size array but uh, we require 1700 data items in the, at the runtime so the memory requirement for 1700 data items cannot be fulfilled only 1000 data items can be stored because the array was array was of size 1000 only so we have fallen short of the memory so in the case of uh, array we can either fall in short of memory or there is a wastage of the memory there can be wastage of memory so to avoid these two situations the linked list can be used moreover the, in the linked list and the in the array also the insertion and deletion can take place at any place either at the beginning or somewhere in the middle or at the end so insertion and deletion is possible at all the positions fine now let us try to write the al uh, different algorithms for the linked list so suppose there is a linked list let's say this is the linked list and the address of the first node in this linked list is start now the first, first uh, algorithm that we are going to write is the traverse algorithm in which start is given and we have to traverse this linked list so traversal means we have we may have to go to every node and display the information of every node so if we are writing the traverse program so we have the information about the first node only we do not have the information about second third or fourth node so we will take a temporary pointer p which takes the address of the first node address of the first node is start and then with the help of this p we will display the information so we are first going to display the information of first node so how we will write the information of the first node write p dot info after this we need to move to the next node how we will how will we move to the next node the address of the next node is kept here in this field so if i refer to the field p dot next then i will have the information of the next node so if i have the address of the next node there should be some variable that should store the address of this node so what we have done we have already printed the information of this node work of p is over now if we know the, that the address of the next node is p dot next so this can be stored in p okay so p equals to p dot next it means p is now keeping the address of this node we can again print the information of this second node and can move to the next node so this process is the repeated process so we will be doing it for every node so let's say we have reached here and we have printed the information then with the with the uh, statement p equals to p dot next i have reached here now i have printed the information of this node and with the help of p equals to p dot next i have reached here and then we have printed the information of this node and with the help of p equals to p dot next i have moved ahead now p dot next now contains a null by p equals to p dot next p also contains the null now so once the p has become null this is an indication that the linked list has ended there is no more nodes in the linked list so this will be the terminating condition okay so since this is uh, the repeated process so i can write a loop while p is not equal to null this process will continue so in this process what we are doing we are going to print the information of a node and then moving ahead to the next node fine so this is the algorithm for traversal here we begin and here we so this is the first 
in uh, algorithm that we have written for the linked list. Now let us write more uh, algorithms related to the linked list. Let's say we are, we are writing the algorithm for insertion in the beginning. Okay, so insertion in the beginning of linked list that has the address start and the information x is to be inserted as a linked list information. So suppose this is the linked list. Okay, in this linked list start is given. Now start is given. Now I have to add another node that contains the information x. Okay, so now with the help of the diagram, let's draw a new diagram just to understand this. So this is the linked list and the address of the first node is a start. Okay. Now after the uh, once we have the information of the first node, then if we have to insert another node with the information x in the beginning, it means before this I have to insert a node. So let's say there is a function get node which will provide us a node every time when we require this. So it will provide us a blank node and let's say the address of the blank node is kept in the p variable. So get node allocates the memory for a node, it provides us a node and let's say the address of the node is denoted by p. So now after this we can keep the information x here in this node. So p dot info is equals to x and then we can link these two nodes. How can we link these two nodes? For linking this node, the next field of uh, this p node should contain the information of this node. Okay, so p dot next next field of this p node should contain the address of this node, which is start. Address of this node is start. Now the linked list has got changed. Now new first this was the uh, first node. Now after the insertion of this node, this node has become the first node. So this start should be keeping the address of first node always. So this start should be pushed to this place. So start now now takes the address of the first node, which is P. This node is the first node, which has address P. First node has got changed. So start should always keep the address of the first node. That's why start will keep the address of this node. Start is equals to P. So this is the algorithm for insertion in the beginning. Fine. Now let us write few more uh, algorithms related to the linked list. Let's say I have to insert after the given node. Okay, a node is given. After the, that node, you have to insert an information. Let's say this is the linked list, and uh, this is the node which has the address p. So you have to insert a node after this. So insert after P is the address of the node given and X is the information which is to be inserted. So for this insertion, you can take a new node. Let's say this node is Q. Okay, you can keep the address X here. So uh, you can keep the information X here. So how can we take a new node? We have a function get node which will provide us with a new node every time we require it. So Q equals to get node. After this, you can put the information q dot information x here. Now uh, insertion after this p node means that we have to insert before this node. Okay, so it means that the q node should be inserted in between this node and this node. Okay. So we need to uh, do the pointer adjustments. For doing the pointer adjustment, if this is the P node, address of this node should be next of P, P dot next. Why so? Because this is containing the address of next node. So P dot next will be containing the address of this node. So P dot next is the address of this node. Now what you can do, you can assign the address in the next field of this as this node. And then the address of next this p should be next field of this p node should contain the address of this node. 
So there are two point adjustments required. First, the next field of Q node should keep the address of this node and address of this node is P dot next. And then next field of this node should contain the address of this node, the new node which has been created. So P dot next is equals to Q. Okay, now the insertion is done. You can see that we have taken a new node, Q equals to get node. We have kept the information X here. After this, the pointer adjustment, if this is the P node, this is the P, P dot next. It, this has the address P dot next. Now, the next field of this node, new node should contain the address of this node. So that's why Q dot next equals to P dot next. And then next field of this node should contain the address of this node. So P dot next is equals to Q. Okay. So this way the insertion has taken place. We have not applied any exceptional condition. We shall add that to those conditions later. Okay. Now the next function, next insertion function we are going to design is the insert and function. Insert and function means the link list is given, the address of the first node is given and we have to insert a node after the last node, after the last node. So once again, suppose this is the link list. And this is the address of the first node, which is a start. And after the last node, I have to insert a new node. Now you see uh, that we don't have the address of the last node. So we will have to reach to the last node by the traversal, we will be reaching to the last node. So for doing the traversal, let's say we start from here. Okay. So we have to reach to the last node and the identification of the last node is that its next field is null. Okay. So next field of this node is not null. So I can move ahead. Next field of this node is not null. So I can move ahead. Next field of this node is null. So I can stop here. It means that I have reached the last node. So since I have reached to the last node, now I can do the insertion. Okay. So for doing the insertion, we'll be writing the code. Let us first reach to the last node. So how is how how can we reach to the last node? I have started with the first node. And I have traversed to reach to the till the last node. And the identification of last node is that its next field is null. So by the time the next field of this P is not null, I will be keeping, I will be going to the next nodes. So P equals to P dot next. Okay. So I'm going to the next node with this statement while P is dot next is not null. Till the time I have not reached to the next node, uh, last node, I will be moving ahead. Now, uh, once this loop finishes, you will reach to the last node. Once you have reached the last node, let's do the process of insertion. So for doing the process of insertion, let's take a new node Q. Let's put the information X here. And since this node will become the new last node, so the next field of this node should be null. Okay. And then the linking of this node and this node, previous last node and new last node. So the next field of this little node will contain the address of this node, new node. Okay, so what we have done here, we have to take a new node. So how can we take a new node? Q equals to get node. So Q equals to get node will provide you a new node. Then you will keep the information X here. So Q dot info is equals to X. Then the next field of this new node will be set as null. So Q dot next is equals to null because this will become the new last node. And finally, the linking of this node with this one. So next field of P will contain Q. So P dot next will contain Q. Okay. So this is the insert end function. So this is the algorithm for insert end function. Now let us try to add some exceptional condition in the in these functions. So we're starting with the insert end only. Let's say we don't have any node in the beginning. 
so if we do not have any node in the beginning then the start will be null so if start is null it means we will be whenever we will be inserting a node that should be inserted as a first node if there is no node in the beginning and start is null whenever we will insert a node that should be the first node okay so in case this start is null we can check here if start is null it means i need to insert the node in the beginning otherwise the entire process the whatever we have written so only in the case when the first node is null it means there is no node uh, th there is no node in the linked list we will do the insert beginning otherwise we will do this entire process now for this insert after let's say the node which is given to you is null it means the p is null means the node after which which is where there should be insertion it is null okay so the insertion will not be possible in that case so if p is not null then only we will do this insertion will be null only if p is not null and in case p is null insertion will not be possible so in case p is null write void insertion void insertion means insertion is not possible so if p is not null the insertion process can continue but if p is null insertion process cannot continue the insertion is not possible void insertion fine so in the next lecture we will discuss about some of the uh, deletion functions possible in the linked list thank you